Hello everyone, I'm Kerry Lou and welcome to Silver Style Studio. It's been a while. Like I said a couple of months ago, it was going to be a very busy summer and it has been. So let's catch up a bit. First of all, I had COVID about a month ago. Seems like there's no getting around it. Almost everyone I know has had it by now, even though Joe and I have been vaccinated and double boosted. But oh well, at least those things made it a little bit less serious. Um, it was really kind of like a bad cold with bouts of fatigue afterwards. But apart from that, I'm up again and raring to go. So enough about all that COVID stuff. I want to talk about some happy things. Like for instance, my son James and Elizabeth got married about a month ago. Yay! We are so happy and congratulations to them. In this video, I'll show you my wedding day dress choice, my accessories, my shoes, and at the end of all that, I'll show you how I did this hair and my makeup. But first, let me show you some beautiful wedding day photos. This wedding was made with love and care and creativity, and that really showed. The wedding was so unique and beautiful. It was a small barn wedding. All our close friends and family did whatever they could to help out. It was a hot day, but the kids anticipated that. So they made the ceremony short and sweet, and they handed out fans for all the guests so we could keep cool. These toddlers found their own way to cool off. Isn't that cute? Friends and family helped with the bouquet and also with the flowers for the table. My son James and Liz wanted hand carved signs for the barn. So he carved them and I painted them. Liz's 15 year old niece, Juliana, made this beautiful cake. I could not believe it. She did such an outstanding job. James and Liz's best friend, Amanda, came all the way from California to officiate the ceremony. You couldn't miss that hot pink suit. So enough about them. Let's talk about me and my outfit. <laughs> if some of you have been following me on Instagram, you will know that it was a process trying to find the right dress. I found Nordstrom's personal styling service really helpful. And guess what? There's no charge. You just make an appointment with Nordstrom's, tell them your size, your style, basically what you're looking for, and they'll pull about 10 dresses for you by the time you get there. It really saves you time. And they open you up to perhaps styles that you didn't really think about. Nancy from the Short Hills Mall store was fantastic. She really pulled some nice dresses for me. This one was a dress by Tahari ASL. I loved it, but maybe it was a bit too tropical for a barn wedding. Nancy also found this one for me, which was lovely, but more appropriate for the low key outdoors rehearsal dinner, which is what I wore it for. The fabric had a nice stretch to it and it was really comfortable. This was one of my favorites and a lot of my Instagram followers loved it too. Now, I might have gone for this one, but it fit a little bit boxy and it kind of poofed out in the back in an odd way. Probably wasn't the dress. I think it's because I'm so short-waisted. It wasn't really right for me. Another one from Marchesa. I kind of liked this one. I found it very charming. What looks like little white polka dots are actually little white embroidered hearts. What I didn't like about this dress was it kind of made my boobs look low, especially from the side angle. No woman needs that. <laughs> okay, this one was red carpet fabulous, but not for a barn wedding. And plus it looked way too bridal. This dress is from Dress the Population. All these dresses are listed in the video description below, by the way. So let me show you the winner. This dress is from Diane von Fustenberg. And every time I've ordered something from her, I have never been disappointed. 
I loved the way it moved, especially when I was dancing with my little granddaughter. It was cool, it was comfortable, it checked all the boxes. I just felt really good in this dress. And when you put the right dress on, you get a sense of yes. Am I right? So let's talk about the jewels, darling. I know you want to. The earrings. I got these from a local jewelry store in our little village here. And um, I had a lot of jewelry that I no longer wore. Most of it was gold and I had kind of moved on to white gold or silver or platinum. So I traded in the old jewelry that I never wore and I got these lovely earrings. And they are the perfect color for me and they're so versatile. I can wear them with something dressy or if I'm wearing something more casual, that's fine too. It just elevates the look. My husband Joe got me this cuff bracelet about 20 years ago from Tiffany's. Introduced in the 1970s, designed by Elsa Peretti, the bone cuff is a true iconic classic and a testament to the former Holston model's incredible sense of style. I wore my queen baby rose ring and what I like about this ring is that you can wear it with jeans and a t-shirt for a rock and roll look but it just makes any outfit look a little edgier. I was beginning to feel like everything was so neutral so I decided to add a pop of color and I found this orange silk flower to put in my hair and I'll be showing you how to do this in a little bit later. And I also found this straw orange clutch, which I thought went really well with the whole barn theme. And it was the perfect size to pop in my cell phone, my lipstick, and of course, a couple of tissues. Okay, next, shoes. Oh, I must have tried on about eight different pairs of shoes because they had to be comfortable and look good. So finally, I found these shoes. These are from a company called Soft, and they really are. Now, I know it doesn't look like a summer shoe, but bear in mind that I had a lot of gravel and grass to walk over, so I needed something that would really be stable. These have a nice platform. However, after about an hour, they did start to rub on the tops of my toes because it was the first time I wore them. And here's a tip, <laughs> wear them a few times before you wear them to your special occasion. Let me show you what I ended up wearing at the wedding. And this is another tip, have a pair of flats standing by. Here is what my standby shoes were, and I ended up wearing these for the rest of the night. 100% comfortable. Flat, but with a little bit of a platform. I was really happy with them. Oh, and one more thing before I show you how I did my makeup and hair. Let me show you my underwear. Seriously, it's so important to have the right shapewear under a beautiful dress. Even though I'm on the slim side, I do have a bit of a belly that doesn't look so great in a dress like this. I don't know what happens. I wake up in the morning and I look okay. I mean, I have a little bit of a belly because I'm 64 years old, but then gravity takes its toll, I suppose, because in the evening, sticks out like a, a little bun. So this is from Honey Love. They were kind enough to send me this when I told them about the wedding. This is called the Power Brief and it's extremely comfortable. If you see the derriere is um, it's kind of let out. It's not going to squish your butt because I've tried on some of these before other brands and I don't exactly have much of a butt to begin with. So I really appreciate that this just lets your natural butt out while keeping your waist and your tummy a bit flatter and smoother. It has these bones on the side, so it's not going to roll down during the day like some of them do. I wore a strapless bra for the wedding because of this neckline, but Honey Love did send me this bra to try. 
it is so comfortable it has no underwire you can really wear it all day i've even worked out in this bra you you don't get that urge to rip it off at the end of the day you know you know how that goes so let's talk about the makeup but before I do, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell because when you do, you're going to find out whenever I drop a new video. And now, on to the makeup. I thought an earthy, sunny look with a pop of warm red for the lips would be absolutely perfect for this look. But as you can see, it takes a few steps to achieve this natural look. So let's get started. First I'll prime with this primer from Paula's Choice. Next a little eye cream. This always helps the concealer go on much more smoothly. This foundation is from Ilia Beauty. The shade is called Paloma. I don't get too tan in the summertime, but if you find that your skin does change, you get a little darker, make sure you also change the color of your foundation. This concealer is by CoverGirl. The color is Perfect Beige. This concealer is thicker than the one I usually wear because the wedding was outdoors and the weather was really hot. I knew my regular concealer would never hold up, so this one is more long-lasting. This concealer really makes a good eyeshadow base too. I'm using Ilia's Fade Into You Powder. This will help my contour and blush blend much easier. I know most of my audience is turned off of powder, and I don't use it most of the time, but for a special occasion when there's lots of photos being taken, I have to have it. Otherwise, you can end up looking oily. Those of you that have seen my videos know that I love this contour powder. It's Hula by Benefit. I like that this doesn't have an orangey yellow look like some bronzers or contours do. This is a travel size. I love travel sizes. I like to also dust some across my eyelids. That's a great trick for when you don't want to wear eyeshadow. I'm adding a rosy glow with L'Oreal True Match and it's called La Vie en Rose. I like to dust some around my temples too just for a little extra radiance. For the first step of my eyeshadow, I'm using Ilia Beauty Liquid Powder in the color Sheen. I think you'll really appreciate how smoothly this formula applies. And who doesn't want to have a fan handy to stay cool and to help dry your makeup? I have been experimenting with my new palette from Colourpop. Colourpop have several palettes. This one is called Gone Matte, and as the name suggests, it's all matte. This colour is called Snoozin' and it gives my eyes much more depth. This next color is called Sleepwalker. It's kind of a nice deep chocolatey brown. I'm keeping this color nice and tight against my lashes using a smaller brush. The brushes are from my own makeup brush line. You can find all the information to those in the video description below. Now you'll see that I'm sweeping this color up into my contour area this creates a nice upswept look. And this last color is called Eurofo. I'm putting that right under the arch of my brow 
which creates a nice lift. This eyeliner is from Tracedeek. I've been using this for over a year now and I really love the way it lasts. Not just on my eyes, but it tends not to dry out like some eyeliners do. I love the handy little smudger tool at the end. Now I'm just going to revisit this Ilia eyeshadow and I'm going to use it underneath my eye to give a little bit more definition but without it looking too heavy. I already curled my lashes off camera and now I'm giving my lashes a generous coating of mascara. This one is L'Oreal and it's carbon black. Now let's even out these eyebrows. I'm going to do that using this grayish tone eyeshadow. The color is Overcast. One of my eyebrows is thinner and darker than the other. Oh well, eyebrows are sisters, not twins. Most people's faces are asymmetrical, often becoming more so as we get older. So it kind of makes sense that eyebrows aren't going to be an exact match. So don't worry, they don't have to be perfect. Next, I'll use this eyebrow mascara by NYX, which I've used forever. The color is blonde. It's always so satisfying when you find makeup that's not expensive and works well. Okay, they're still not a perfect match, but they will have to do. And for the lips, I went with this beautiful red by Ilya. Now let's see if I can apply it straight from the tube. I love it and it will really add a nice pop of color to my outfit. And one more thing, we mustn't forget our makeup setting spray. This one is a cheapie by Milani and it works great. I didn't want to have to think about my hair the whole day. It would be hot, humid. I would be dancing a lot. My head would be sweating. Or as my little granddaughter likes to say, Nana, my hair is crying. <laughs> so here's how I did my hair. I've already blown out my hair and smoothed it with my straightening iron. Next, I'm going to smooth in a little bit of this grooming cream from Bumble and Bumble. I'm going to be using this contour cream by Bumble and Bumble. But you can use any kind of heavier hair wax that you like, or even hair gel will work just fine. I like to try to give it a little bit of texture as I'm going along. You'll see me raking my fingers through it. That's so it doesn't look too neat, too flat. Next, I'll secure my hair in the back using this scrunchie. I'll just pull a few pieces up here so it doesn't look too flat. Next, my little hair scrunchie friend. This is getting rather old and ratty by now, but to tell you the truth, the older it looks, the more natural it seems to appear. This is so easy to use. You put it in just like you would a ponytail holder. You can play with the shape a little bit. 
And then I'm just going to use a couple of bobby pins to help keep it in place. Now it feels nice and secure. You could give it a little shake if you like, just to make sure. And the finishing touch for this hairstyle is this bright orange silk flower that I found on Amazon. And there you have it. An elegant hairstyle that will withstand the summer heat. So this is the finished look. Let me know what you think of my mother of the groom look or mother of the bride, of course. And if you have any tips for the mother of the groom or mother of the bride, feel free to give them in the comments section below. You know, I always love to hear from you. Well, that's it from me for now, and I'll see you next time. Bye.